features that maybe buy this camera. Let's just go over those. I wanted something that I could be trackside at Silverstone and catch all the action, 50 frames per second at 4K, and if need be, pull stills off that. 4K stills off live action at a motor event. Okay, you've got your viewing screen here, which works in both directions. Love the size and build. I did an interview the other day with a guy from ELO and I was able to just pop it there with a shotgun mic on the top and just chat to him. One of the other attractive features of this camera for me was the multi-codex. We're not tied down to a specific codec, so I can happily record at HD 25 frames per second, 4K 50 frames, 4K 25 frames. You can record at cinema 4K at 24 frames, which is even a little bit bigger. You've got time code. I mean, the amount of pro features on a prosumer camera is quite staggering, really. I'm still finding stuff out about the camera every day. A great little feature I found the other day for when we're filming in theatres is the ability to apply a soft knee to the overexposure of an image. A lot of theatres and venues now use a lot of LED lights, some of which can be very harsh. So you can apply a knee on this camera at the top end. You can either apply it 100%, 90% or 80% which uh, can really save you during a shoot. As I say, a lot of stuff that's aimed at not having to, a lot of time to set something up. Just being able to be expected to hit the ground, grab an interview, or be on, on set in 10 minutes. It's also very handy for filming all the behind the scenes stuff on a film shoot. Very wide spectrum of light conditions it seems to work. And then the other thing I wanted was I wanted a camera with one fixed lens, which is the exact reverse of how we, we're thinking when we're filming on a film set of this prime lens, that prime lens. I needed something that was small, handy, but had a wide enough zoom to cover, as I say, trackside, 30 mil wide lens right through to five, 600 mil. Most of the buttons on the camera, of which there are many, are user assignable, which is great. Um, I tend to change a few of these to the things I need. So for instance, there's a button on the top, button six, called record check, right next to my zoom, and I've changed that to uh, still capture. Very handy for doing social media stuff where the doco that you're filming straight after is someone that expects a few stills for social media. So most of the key features can be put close to hand because you don't want to be looking through menus when you want to shoot. There's also a lovely little wheel here which can operate the shutter, gain, white balance or whatever. That's cool too. The audio side of the Panasonic is very thorough. On top of having inbuilt mics, there is also dual XLRs. A nice little idea is that the second XLR, rather than both being at the front, is at the back of the camera and can be set to mic or line level. So you could literally be recording one channel of a mixing desk with that whilst the other ones are set to shotgun on the camera. There's a lovely little glowing ring, which has, is either the Panasonic blue and also goes red when you're going to record. And back to blue when you come out and record. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Hang in there, everybody. <laughs> so it's been a long shoot today. This is also useful in low light for, for getting used to, once you're used to the camera, getting your hand in the right place for the three fully manual rings for the iris, the focus and zoom. That's a little overview of the Panasonic. I'll come back and do a proper review when I've had some sleep. The light goes red at the top, my ring goes red, so my ring goes red. <laughs> <laughs>